It's like one of those words that's very old school. If you and I are Italian and we are, you eat like a dago. Ah, ha, ha. That's, it's kind of funny. When I say you effing dago, I'm going to kick you. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a little different. You mentioned Toscano Brothers and you also have dago. Is that, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, there's Dago Bagel, Toscano Brothers, and then uh, within that bakery, there's another concept that's launching called Antonio's uh, Italian Pastries. It's actually starting on Thursday, this Thursday. Bread, bagels, pastries. Why did it make sense to do three concepts in one uh, versus just calling it Toscano Brothers and serving the three? That's a good question. Um, so... Two years ago, I was going to take over a bakery, an old bakery, Italian French bakery uh, up the street from Tony's, and it didn't go through. This went through the whole summer of working out a lease. It didn't happen, and it didn't happen on the summer of 2019. It uh, I didn't move forward. It comes around. I'm thinking about a bakery. COVID hits. 2020. Thank God I didn't sign that lease. Actually, that would have been a mess. Um, and during COVID, I saw that, hey, I wanted to still open a bakery up. I uh, was working on the bagel concept and bakery through all of COVID. Um, Tony's, which is to my right here, um, was getting parklets being built. All these things were being built. I knew that it would be busier than what it was in 2019 when 2021 was going to hit because we're going to have double the seating. So I said, I really need to figure out where to do dough production, move the mixers out of, let's find a hub, let's do the bakery out of it, the bagel shop. So all this kind of erupted during COVID, found a location, started building it. And it was a two-year process. I mean, it was a long process. So a lot of people are saying, oh, you jumped on the bagel bandwagon. Well, dude, this was like two years and it never happened. So it finally happens. And we make great, uh, so I have Giovanni's in the neighborhood a slice house in the neighborhood, the bakery in the neighborhood. So we all refrigerated cabinets. So I said, well, the, the pastry side of it, we can make pastries here and sell pastries out of, uh, into the other locations. I'm not going to put Tony's name on it. I'm going to call it Antonio's Italian pastries, North beach. If somebody wanted to buy pastries for their cafe, coffee shop, whatever they can buy from Antonio's it doesn't have Tony Gimignani like it, like it does. So then we had the bakery, Toscano Brothers, and that was a bread bakery that I was working on with Nikki and, Nikki and Kichuso from uh, Central Milling. Um, so that that was the bread component. Now, sourdough, 100% sourdough bread, baguettes, uh, all these different breads. And then there was the bagel component. So it's funny. I was thinking of a bagel name during the whole uh, pandemic. Uh, a friend of mine, who's also my attorney, Adam Sachs, he's a bread uh, bread genius, magician, attorney uh, on my pizza team. Uh, I taught him how to make pizzas. Um, him and I were working on bagels forever. Um, the reason why it's called Dago Bagel, which you're like, why the heck did he call it Dago Bagel? Um, was during the middle of the pandemic, I had somebody was trying to close me. In the middle of the pandemic, Tony's was open, but 30% of all the restaurants were, were open. 70% were closed during the pandemic. So like you had Joe's, you had me, you had one guy there. Everybody, it was dark. And so when you're busy, it was busy. When you had Uber drivers out front and there was a stay at home order, it was insane with Uber drivers. It was just, whoever was open was crazy in the pizza business. And anybody can say that unless they had a hundred seats or over. So, so I kept on having health department come down. The, all these different departments came down. The entertainment commission, the city attorney called me, all, all these things. Like, so who's complaining? Who's mad that I'm open right now? Like, come on, tell me. They want to tell me. Somebody's calling in. Somebody's pissed. Anyways, we find out that it's a neighbor and a neighbor's um, uh, a neighbor. We got into it uh, in front of a bus stop, which I'm pointing to right here because I'm in my office right there. We're, we're, we're arguing. And he's with a friend who's mad that I'm open. So he's pissed off. He's mad. I don't, this friend, I don't really know. He's a friend of the neighbors. We get into it. My wife's there. My GM's there. So later, several weeks later, we're in front of Tony's or I'm in front of Tony's and uh, the friend comes by and he, we, we get into it a little bit. He says, Hey, who, who told you I called on you? And I said, look, 
you told me like a few weeks ago that you called on me, you showed me my phone, you said, have you ever been by your place at night? I said, I'm here every day. So just get out of here, man. He's all you effing dagos are like. You're nothing but effing dagos. You come here. You're good for nothing. You're nothing but greasy wops. Hey, tough guy. You want to come around this building? I'll sh- why don't you show me how much a tough guy you are, you effing dago? I'm like, okay. <laughs> like Now this guy's pissed about me being Italian or Portuguese or Spanish. He's just mad that I'm a dago. So I don't get into a fight with him. I told him to move along, to pretty much get the F out of here. I could have punched the guy's lights out. Trust me. The guy's an older man. I don't know why he said it and what his deal was. I don't know. He's just, he moved along. I got pissed, called Adam. And he said, you know, maybe you should go do a police report. I said this, and I'm pissed. I'm just pissed. Cause you know, you get into it with somebody and this guy's pointing at your neck, you, 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 you know, and you're just like, you know, you're mad and I'm mad right now. I'm getting red. So this happens. I, do a, a police report because the police have enough going on. I'm like, okay, man. Hey, Tony, what's up? We what don't, I, I just want to do a police report. Okay. This guy called me this. I don't, if the guy burns my place down, I, I, I wanted to at least know he's a neighborhood kind of guy. This is what he's wearing. Where's black. Where's the hat? And, you know, okay. We took it down, blah, blah, blah. So I went back and to the restaurant and I said, I called Adam. I'm going to call it Dago Bagel. I'm Adam's attorney. I don't know about that. You know, could go a certain way. I, listen, man, I'm so pissed off at this guy. Every time he sees that effing sign, he's going to think of me. Screw that guy. I don't give a shit. I, you know, so we, we got into it. And, and he's like, you know, it could go different ways. I said, you know what? I know it could go different ways. And people take back names. And this name, reason why it. And, and anybody under 40 probably doesn't know what the word means. And anybody over 40 probably does. It's like one of those words that's very old school. If you and I are Italian and we are, oh, you eat like a Dago. Ah, ha, ha, that's, it's kind of funny. When I say you effing Dago, I'm going to kick you. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a little different. So bagel, the bagel concept is definitely an entity of its own. And out of all, well, the pastries haven't started, but the bagels are definitely the busiest. Um, so I had to up the um the amount from the start and up our sourdough so yeah there's three concept in 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 one if um local cafes want to buy uh bagels which we do uh we are selling um they're able to do that now because we have enough production and yeah that's kind of like the short story of that (laughs) um but yeah uh, that's going pretty well right now well congratulations it sounds like the best way to get revenge is uh, show putting up a sign to remind him every day that he's an asshole. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes. Heard more great stories from Italians in the neighborhood about that word, about their grandfather that, hey man, I, I mean, I've heard when I open, I had letters. <laughs> I, had, I had letters. I had, I had emails. I had uh, people coming in telling me that they were bullied And they would call him that or my grandfather or my dad hated that word. He did that. You know, I'm glad you're taking that back. You know, it was, it was one of those things. And I remember that word too, growing up. I mean, I mean, we we had a farm, we had my grandpa, we lived with my grandpa. Um, So yeah, it, it, um, it was an interesting time and I wasn't going to put it on Facebook or I wasn't going to do a GoFundMe. I wasn't, it wasn't that. I mean, there's a lot more shit going on in this world. Trust me. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot going on that, that are even more serious than this. I opened up my little store, the Chron- Chronicle wrote about it. It went national. Everybody was going crazy. I said, have you tried the bagels yet? <laughs> you know, I'd like you to try the bagels. I mean, like, I know the name's crazy. There's a, a new book coming out about um, racial, like ethnic slurs. And, and uh, I got, uh, I'm in this new book coming out, which was kind of interesting. So I told them the story, a writer uh, who, who's from Berkeley, who lives in LA now. So it was interesting just from that little piece that happened and what I named this place to where it really became, uh, where it really went to. Um, but, uh, but no, the bagels are pretty awesome. True New York bagel. Hey, you'll love it. I've, I've turned more New Yorkers that have come in, uh, old school New Yorkers that like love it. So they're my best customers. <laughs> I can't wait to try it. And I think we have a lot more people that have it on the radar now after you've described it. So thank you. 